Now we're on page 45. This is exercise number seven. And um, the writing on the CCG is a little bit of a giveaway because you can see that um, uh, the person who did this uh, electrocardiogram did, uh, oops, did um, right-sided precordial lead. So RV1, RV2, RV3, 4, 5, and 6. Um, there's really no, no need to do RV1 through RV6. Just RV4, 5, and 6 is good enough. So you don't need to move all six precordial leads. But if, if they suspected uh, right ventricular infarct, then you know, this is why I said it's a bit of a giveaway, you know you're probably dealing with an inferior wall MI, which is fed by the RCA in most of the population, and the RCA feeds the right ventricle, and that's why we, as a gold standard, we do right-sided precordial leads. Uh, but let's go through this from left to right anyway, and um, again, we'll uh, uh, look at lead two, and in lead two, there's ST elevation here. Uh, lead three, there's ST elevation as well. Oops, well, I can't, can't draw today. And in AVF, there's ST elevation as well. So we clearly have criteria for an inferior wall MI. We have uh, ST elevation in three anatomically contiguous leads. Now, uh, you recall that um, when we see an inferior wall MI, we look for posterior wall info of posterior wall involvement in the form of ST depression in V1 and V2. But we don't have V1 and V2 on this cardiogram. We have RV1 and RV2, so we won't worry about it for now. Presumably, whoever did this cardiogram uh, looked at those leads. Um, now, if we look at uh, RV4 through RV5, uh, in RV4, very difficult to tell whether there's ST elevation there, but we clearly have ST elevation in RV5, and we have it in RV6 as well. Again, my apologies, my drawing is not very good here. We have, uh, looks like RV, RV6 fell off. The patient probably, was probably uh, diaphoretic here. Uh, but we definitely have ST segment elevation in RV5, RV6. Even if you only see ST elevation in one of the right-sided precordial leads, that's generally good enough because when you put right-sided precordial leads uh, over, over on that right side of the chest, uh, because these are unipolar leads and they're at a distance from the myocardium, um, the complex is going to be small. So the ST segments are going to be small, and you may only see it in one lead. Um, so again, uh, the gold standard, if you have an inferior wall MI, is to do right-sided precordial leads. That's the expectation of uh, emergency room staff. That's the expectation of pre-hospital staff, uh, barring you know, a short transport and an unstable patient and, uh, you know, where it's just not practical to do right-sided precordial leads. But that is the expectation. And if you recall, if a patient has a, an inferior wall MI with an RV infarct and they're hypotensive, typically, uh, so they've got acute right-sided failure, typically these patients um, have a slow to normal heart rate. They have a clear chest, right, because we're not talking about left-sided failure with fluid that backs up to the lungs. We're talking about right-sided failure where the right ventricle is not able to adequately pump blood to the lungs. And uh, so they're hypotensive, normal to, to slow heart rates, a clear chest, and not uncommon to see jugular venous distension as well because if the right ventricle is not pumping adequately, uh, it's preload, then blood backs up in the jugular veins. Uh, the treatment for... Um, RV infarcts with hypotension is fluid resuscitation. And sometimes with these patients, you can give them anywhere from a liter to two liters of uh, crystalloids uh, before you start to get the pressure up. And you, you gauge the fluid resuscitation uh, on their level of consciousness and orientation. So if they're hypotension and hypoperfuse to the point where they're drowsy or confused, you fluid res resuscitate them, uh, auscultating the chest every 250 cc's to make sure they don't go into pulmonary edema. And, uh, you, you know, you really only want to get the blood pressure up to the point where they're a little more alert and perhaps oriented. Um, so that might be a pressure of 90, and that's all that's required. We don't have to shoot for a pressure of 120 on 80. It doesn't have to be perfect.